Hello everybody. I don't have a cameraman today. Evan's not filming me. I'm filming myself. So I'm afraid you're going to see me jump up at the end and stop the recording on the iPad. So today I'm going to be talking to you about my new book called The Suitcase by an author called Chris Naylor Ballesteros who has also drawn the illustrations. And I'm going to do something slightly different today. I'm going to read you the whole book first and then I'm going to show you some creative bits and pieces you can do at home. Of course, there's lots and lots of resources on the website, but you don't need them. You could do all of it at home with things you've already got or just pieces of paper. It's completely up to you. Right, this is a very, very lovely book and it's all about refugees. However, once you read, listen to the blurb that I'm going to read you, I think it's very fitting for what's happening right now as well. So here we go, the suitcase. When a weary stranger arrives one day with only a suitcase, everyone is full of questions. Why is he here? Where has he come from? And just what's in that suitcase? A story full of heart, hope and kindness about how we treat those in need. And it's that last bit that I think is very poignant. That means very important for what's happening today. A story full of heart, hope and kindness about how we treat those in need. So let's find out what happens in the suitcase. Now what's lovely about this book is a lot of it is told just through the character's speech and they're each written in a different colour. So we're going to find out about this very strange and unusual creature that nobody has seen before and its suitcase. A strange animal arrived one day looking dusty, tired, sad and frightened. He was pulling a big suitcase. in your suitcase? My suitcase? Well, there's a teacup. A teacup? That's a big suitcase for a little teacup. Yes, I suppose it is. But there's a table for my teacup and a wooden chair for me to sit on too. There's a table and a chair in your suitcase? Impossible. Well, it's his suitcase, but a table and a chair, really? Yes. And there's a little kitchen in a wooden cabin where I make my tea. That's my home. It's on a hillside surrounded by trees and on a clear day you can see the sea. It's all there in my suitcase. But I'm sorry, I'm really very tired. I've been travelling for a long time and come a long way. I must have a little rest. What a strange animal. I've never seen anything like him before. Neither have I, but we really should let him sleep for a while. Well, I don't trust him. How do we know he's telling the truth? There's only one way to find out. Someone passed me a big rock. We're going to break open the suitcase and see what's inside. Maybe we should. We need to know the truth. You can't do that. It's not ours. Oh dear. In no time at all, the suitcase was open. Hmm. I'm not sure I like that fox. we go. See? A broken teacup and an old photograph. He lied to us. Well, no, he he did say there was a teacup. Yes, and now his suitcase is broken too. What will he think of us? Meanwhile, the sleeping stranger dreamed about running away and hiding, about climbing over mountains. 
and swimming across deep waters and he dreamed about his suitcase and all that he had inside it. When he finally awoke, when he finally woke up, he couldn't believe what the other animals had done. And I have to say that to Kesame, I was a little bit worried and shocked when I got to this page, when I read this book first, thinking, oh my goodness, what is going to happen next? Look, the ellipsis, dun dun dun. I was very worried. I have to say, I was on the side of the rabbit. I was very worried what was going to happen now. Was the animal going to find everything broken? Let's find out. The teacup is back on the table. But that's not all. I'm sorry, I broke your suitcase. We fixed it as best we could. And we've been busy while you were sleeping. We hope you like it. Thank you. It's... It's perfect. There's just one tiny problem. Can you see what the animals have done? They've built in his little wooden cabin. We're going to need more teacups. And here we have our last page. The wall of the little wooden cabin and there's his photograph from back home and here's his new photograph with his new friends. Very, very lovely. I loved this book when it arrived through the post, I have to say. So there's a few things that you can do. I've got my little list here of all my ideas and it's on the website in the resources pack. So you could design your own creature. Because it doesn't look like any animal I've ever seen before. Design your own unknown creature. You could make it a suitcase. You could write a story like Chris, all in speech, using different colours for different characters. You can make your own suitcase. This is in my resource pack as always. Make your own suitcase and pack something important in it. So in my suitcase would go a pebble. Okay, my pebble is from a special beach that I go to a lot with my family. In fact, we, I used to go there with Mr Dummett before we even had Evan. So we've been going there a long time. I love collecting pebbles. This is my favourite one. So that would go in my suitcase to remind me of home and my family. You could also draw a picture to go. That's Mr. Dummett and Evan and Embry and Eden. I know they've got no bodies. I wasn't very confident that I would draw them properly, so I decided not to. But here's the lovely beach, the lovely pebbly beach. Where I've got my pebble from where we go every year. And I'm going to put that in my suitcase. You could make your own model of the wooden shack. You could have your own tea party. You could you could write a letter from the animal back home, explaining how he's found a new home and new friends and how he's safe. <coughs> you could think about which character you like best and explain your choice. There's lots of ideas. Mo Farrow is a famous refugee. Could you find some more famous people who who were refugees who or who started their lives as a refugee? And write a biography about them. Well, you could also do some lovely kind things. I'm sure you've all got rainbows in your window, but you could also do some other lovely bits. So I've got some lovely colouring for you to do. There's no place like home. This is my favourite one from the pack. It reminds me of the Wizard of Oz when he clicks her heels and asks to go home. So I've done it in Wizard of Oz colours. There's also colouring sheets that you can make to give to somebody. This one says, I think you are wonderful. My boys at home said I didn't do a very good job of colouring this in because apparently you can't see the words up against the peacock feathers now. 
probably you could probably do a better job than this has done it so there we have it the suitcase really really lovely book all about kindness can you do something kind for somebody today i'm sure you can so have a look on the website lots and lots of lovely resources thank you for listening to my story my next book i'm going to have to try very hard not to come up with loads and loads of ideas so my next book is the illustrated version of harry potter and the goblet of fire i couldn't get away with not doing a harry video could i so coming up next i'm going to show you an illustration from this and lots and lots of fabulous harry things you can do related to the book or perhaps just harry anyway hope you're really safe and well at home missing you not once round academy take care i'm going to disappear and turn my film off as i'm missing my cameraman at the moment okay take care bye everybody <laughs>